Hey guys, it's Hink here. Today we are going to be discussing a pretty interesting paper, guys. It's actually about what part of your body actually correlates with your actual penis size and the research behind it. You're not gonna wanna miss this because even once you learn about what the actual feature is that correlates with penis size, there's actually a lot more we can learn from this paper. And I'm kind of surprised they actually got this published, but let's get into it. So today we're gonna be talking about this paper right here, okay guys? And basically what it looked like, looked at was different features, including nose size, foot size, testosterone level, obesity, your body weight, and how, if any of those features actually correlate with penis size. It's interesting, guys. This paper is available for free. Callie, can you please leave a link below in the description? But it actually is like a pretty, it's a short read, but it's actually a very interesting read. I highly recommend you guys actually read the papers. In the background, it talks about how basically, like a lot of this stuff, a lot of your features are actually basically predetermined, guys. They're in your genetics, and a lot of this stuff is actually determined in utero based on like your in utero androgen exposure, like testosterone exposure if you're a guy. And then of course, like what paper like this would be complete without a section about how society equates having large penis with basically being a real man. We're men, we're men in tights. Always on guard defending the people's rights. You know, everything good that comes with having a large penis and being masculine. So how did they go about doing this paper? Well. They had a thousand, like over a thousand men that actually came to a urology clinic, and I guess they consented to be a part of this trial. And when they did that, they would measure, like for the nose, for example, they measured it like a pyramid, basically, and calculated the volume of the pyramid based on these measurements, okay? As far as like what patients were excluded, they ex excluded any patients that had any kind of like facial surgery, or of course, any kind of penile surgery as well. And when they measured the penis, they actually measured it based on the stretched penile length or the stretch flaccid length. And I know that's a major limitation to study, but guys, stretch penile length is literally a surrogate. It's been published in many papers for actual erect length. It does not correspond one-to-one -one depending on what paper you look at. There's some papers that say that stretch penile length is actually longer than erect length. There's some papers that actually say stretch penile length is shorter than erect length. And if you just go on our subreddit getting bigger, you will find plenty of guys that are saying, my stretch flaccid is longer. Oh, my erect is shorter, etc. But Anyways, guys, it is a surrogate. So what are the results? Well, guys, in this study, the mean age was about 35 years old. The mean stretch penile length was 11.2 centimeters, guys. 11.2 centimeters, okay? That's 4.4 inches, okay? It's not very big, okay? So, I mean, just looking at this study, you guys are worried about your size. Clearly, like, this, this study is... Number one is talking about non-bone pressed length. So it's not trying to say the average size is this small or this cohort is below average, but it is measuring the stretched penile length from literally like a non-bone pressed, meaning from the pubopenile skin junction to the tip of the glands, the tip of the head of the penis, okay? And believe it or not, this was like dual verified. This was measured by two actual urologists. Now, what actually predicted for penile size? Well, guys, I'm not going to lecture you on the difference between a univariate analysis where you just look at like basically one variable and compare it to penile size and multivariate analysis where you simultaneously look at multiple variables, but at the same time, but a multivariable ana analysis is really what you care about. A univariate analysis, it, it, there's too much like bias that can come into play with that. So when they looked at like a univariate analysis, you, they did see things that correlated with penile size as well as like shoe size and height, body mass index, and even like testosterone levels, okay? When you actually like put all that together and look at it all at once, what actually mattered was two things, guys. BMI, how fat you are, and number two was no size, okay? <laughs> And you can see here in this figure, like there is clearly a curve that shows that there is a clear relationship. And another thing guys, is there's something that's called the P value, which basically tells you if something is like real or not, or significant or not. Guys, if there's somebody in the comments that wants to give a mini, a mini TED talk about the intricacies of P values and how I was not specific enough in what I said, then, you know, by all means go for it guys. But in general guys, P values, when you're reading a paper indicates whether something is real or significant or not. Okay. Please somebody leave a comment about the null hypothesis. <laughs> 
I, I, I'd just be interested to see who actually knows what that is and can actually leave an educated comment. But guys, speaking of testosterone, if you want to maximize your testosterone, we have our product Vitality here. It's a great product. It's on Amazon now. So is our Virility product also on Amazon. And guys, you know the OG Vigor. I know guys, we're always out of stock because you guys keep buying it all because it's a great product and I love you for it and I'm working. I promise you, I've ordered a huge order and we're going to be in stock for a while, guys. We should not have these issues, but check. It's probably in stock right now, guys. So guys, what are my takeaways from this paper? Well, I'm not going to be fat shaming here, guys, but this is literally a published paper that they literally say being fat is associated with having a small penis. That is like almost verbatim what they say in their actual conclusion. In this paper, once again, they're measuring non-bone pressed, which hot take heat here. Bow, 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 bow. Like, I, I don't care, guys. That's, that's, you can argue with me. Well, the insertable length, because the fat pad does compress. Like, sure, whatever, guys. But if you want to actually look like you have a big penis, okay, the fat pad is what is contingent upon that. Like, I, it just, if you're nine inches and you have a three inch fat pad, it's going to look like you have a six inch D and you're going to be super fat because you have a three inch fat pad and it's not going to look very big. Like, I, I don't care. Like, I'm, it's, it's not even a discussion to me anymore. Uh, but like all the like overweight guys are always on team like bone pressed matters. It does matter for tracking length because it takes a lot of the like fat pad out of the equation, guys. To me, this is exactly like that meme of that guy that's in the corner. Um, and he's like, they don't know that if I jam a ruler into my pelvis, I'm actually eight inches. If you hold a ruler up and, and it's non-bone pressed and you look like you're six inches, you're going to look like you're six inches, maybe even smaller be if you have like a big fat pad as a result. But Anyways, guys, I'm not saying six inch non-bone pressed is small. That's very big, okay? <laughs> the point is, this is a paper that confirms what I've always said about basically the, the bigger you are, the smaller your penis is going to look, okay? Whether it be fat or whether it be muscle, okay? <laughs> they also talk about how obesity can affect the gonads in your actual sexual development. Like, to me, this is no laughing matter. There's a childhood obesity epidemic, and there's a lot of men that are going to grow up with even smaller penises than they would normally have because of the estrogen levels that are higher, because they're fatter, that is going to completely throw off their natural development development during puberty. If you happen to be a younger guy watching this video, hopefully this didn't get recommended to you in your feed because this is not for children, but you need to lose weight. You need to not, I mean, for your overall health, but even for the love of God, for the size of your penis, you need to lose weight. It's also pretty interesting that androgens can impact facial features. I mean, duh, like strong jaw, facial hair, whatever it may be, even, you know, alopecia. But guys, with this study, there's a reason why I cover up my nose. I don't, I don't want you guys to see that and know how big I am, okay? And a very interesting point, which I'll close with, is like, this is not a one-off paper. This has actually been replicated in other data. Here's another paper here that shows actual nose size is what's correlated with penis size. So pretty interesting, guys. I hope you learned something. I love you guys. Peace and love.